This right here is a map of the world's rainforest, which account for about 30% of all forest. These are defined as receiving at least 200 centimeters of rainfall per year, and most of them are classified as tropical rainforest. The two biggest and most well-known are the Congo, measuring 3.6 million square kilometers, and the Amazon at 5.5 million square kilometers. But the thing is, rainforests do not need to be tropical rainforest. Both temperate rainforest and even boreal rainforest do exist on this planet. They need a specific combination of unique factors in order to exist, and that usually leads them to being these isolated pockets spread throughout the world. But that does make them very interesting case studies that are usually pretty different than the more typical tropical rainforest. So to give you guys a complete picture, roughly 30% of all forests are classified as rainforest. And out of that, 80% are tropical rainforest, but 15% are classified as temperate rainforest, and even a rare 5% are classified as boreal rainforest. And let's begin with the Tarkine temperate rainforest in Tanzania. This biome is relatively small compared to tropical rainforest at just 4,400 square kilometers, but it has managed to persist for an impressive 60 million years. And to make a temperate rainforest, you need three core ingredients. One is a substantial nearby body of temperate water, Two is mountains, this is a key ingredient, and three is favorable wind patterns that interact with this topography in a very specific way. And Tasmania has all of these ingredients. So first you can see that this is an island and it's surrounded by the Southern Ocean, which has temperatures ranging from 10 to 20 degrees Celsius in the immediate facility. And if we switch to a topographical map, we can see that the island is rather rugged with in particular central highlands with peaks of around 15 hundred meters. And mountains are a key ingredient because of the orographical effect. So mountains as low as 500 meters can cause incoming air to rise, cool off, and drop their moisture. This essentially forces high levels of rainfall, which is a key ingredient for temperate rainforest. And the final piece of the puzzle is favorable winds. We can see here that the entire island of Tasmania doesn't have a temperate rainforest. Only the western half has the right combination of ingredients because of the prevailing winds. At this latitude in the southern hemisphere, roughly 41 degrees south, there is a predominant year-round westerly wind, which brings both moisture and moderate temperatures to the western half of the island. So this pocket of a temperate rainforest exists only because of a specific combination of ocean, coastal mountains, and the right winds. And if we zoom out, these factors are pretty consistent for all these isolated pockets of temperate rainforest. One of the closest analogs has to be the Valdivian rainforest in South America. This is at roughly the same latitude as Tasmania, and thus has the exact same westerly breeze. And again, we have tall mountains close to the shoreline, which squeeze moisture out of the air. But even other regions that initially look pretty different, like the southwest coast of the Black Sea, and even the southern Appalachian Mountains within the United States, ultimately have the exact same combination of ingredients, leading to, in some cases, very isolated pockets of temperate rainforest. But easily the most extreme kind of rainforest is that very small sliver classified as boreal rainforest. To get this kind of forest, you need to have an even more precise combination of local weather conditions. And here the best example is the slim coastal region spanning all the way from Anchorage, Alaska down to Vancouver, Canada. This entire area is very far north and located fully within the boreal forest type. But due to a unique warm ocean current originating from the Central Pacific and the way that it interacts with the shape of the coastline here, along with the combination of favorable onshore winds and the existence of the colossal Rocky Mountains, which perfectly coincide with this region, it allows this coastal region to have much more stable, moderate year-round temperatures, which also provide an isolating effect from the more extreme weather found further inland. 